So the next item on the list is the Ninja V itself. I have been saving for the longest time to get this device for two main reasons. I knew that it could improve the quality of my video work uh, by enabling me shoot in 10-bit 422 and also help me with my YouTube videos. Because now when I'm shooting and I attach this to my camera that I'm shooting with, I can record my screen so you guys can actually see what is happening on set. It's something I've always wanted to do. This Ninja V can help me do that, record my viewfinder for you guys to see like what's happening through the camera itself and also help me improve my video quality work when I'm shooting like videos for clients and stuff. So this is the packaging. And we have our Atomo's Ninja V sitting right here. Oh, it actually feels really light. Let me add the battery and then the SSD that came with it and see if it feels even heavier. So this is the SSD and it's going to go into the Ninja V. And it slides right in. It flashes beautifully, so there's no protrusion, nothing. And now it's time to add the battery. So this is going to be the entire setup that sits on the camera. I can't wait to rig the whole camera up and see how um, everything comes together, if I can actually manage the weight. But I really like the way everything is flush. And uh, as you can see, it has two mounting options. So one here one on the other side and it has two hdmi ports right here one is in and the other is out so you have a mic in and a few other ports here as well we have a battery eliminator in the pack we also have a lot of heads as well so you can use you can use the atomos on battery or via like direct power so this can go straight into the atomos and then you can use it um, in case you're do, like you're filming an interview where your camera is on a tripod and you don't want to power it with a battery which you'd have to change when it dies you can just bypass that battery plug directly into the wall and have constant power coming into the atomos ninja v so that is what this is for there's nothing else in the box let me clear this off and now we're going to jump into the main event for today's video all right, so now we have our main, main, main box here to go through. And let's just see what's in the box. First thing is the manual. And a ton of paperwork. I've been using Canon since I started photography, so I don't think I really need to read the manual. And this is the brand new battery that comes with the EOS R6 and the R5. So this is the LP E6 and H battery. You can see it's the same shape and size as the LP E6 N that we've had for the longest time for our Canon cameras. Also comes with a charger brick. Right now, I think I have a lot of these. Same standard design. Nothing has changed. Yeah, LCE6. It's the same thing that we've had for the longest time. Let me compare this Canon battery to the Watson that I got. And this is actually rated higher, like I mentioned. So this is 2250 mAh and this is 2130 mAh so the Watson promises to give you more power and um, I'll test it out and let you guys know if you're looking for a third party lens um, if you're looking for a third party battery to go with your Canon cameras um, I'd recommend the Watson so let me put it to test and let you guys know how it performs compared to the brand new um, Canon LP E6 and H battery all right Okay, we're getting there. <laughs> we're getting there, guys. All right, so this is a standard strap that comes with all cameras. 
and this is the one for the EOS R6. So when you wear it, you're basically letting everybody know what camera brand and model that you're shooting with. All right, so this is the main event. And before I open this, I just want to clear the table one more time. So we give this camera the space that it needs. All right, so I'm just gonna rip this open. Are you guys ready? <laughs> so excited! So excited! So excited! This is our brand new EOS R6. So as you can see, they didn't hold back on the R6 at all. It has this curtain that covers or protects the sensor. It was present in the EOS R, it's in the R5 and it's in the R6. It's really, really handy because it prevents dirt from getting to your sensor. So this is the Canon EOS R6, the brand new EOS R6, and I feel the grip, I can feel a difference in the grip. It feels full, and so when I'm holding this, because most of the time when I'm shooting, I don't like to have like straps on my camera. So having this firm grip, uh, just giving me another sense of security, and I really, really love that. One thing I've noticed is, when I was wobbling the camera around, I felt something shaking in there and I was a bit scared, but I realized that is the in-body image stabilization. So that's the IBIS. So when you're shooting handheld and you're moving the camera around, that is what moves around to give you like a stable footage. So if you unbox this camera first and maybe you wobble it around and you hear that sound, don't be scared. It is the IBIS. But then don't shake it too much because it may break. I've missed my flip out screen, but this is something that I really missed when I went back to shooting with the 5D Mark IV. And another difference I've noticed is the top right here. So at the top, in my EOS R, there was a screen um, that was showing me the mode I'm in. And when I want to change the video, I need to press uh, the mode button, press info before I can switch and then see the options for video. But with this, I can just toggle through. And it's just like the 6D or the 6D Mark II, so it's not really too different for me. And one other thing that, one other slight change I've noticed is on the on and off switch. On the EOS R, it was just a circular dial, but sometimes you really had to have a firm grip on before you can switch to on and off. Now they have a little projection, which makes it easy for you to switch between on and off. Another thing I've noticed is going to be the joystick, which is going to allow you to move your focus points around. But I never used that when I was using the EOS R because it didn't have it. But because the screen is so sensitive, the touch screen is really well done, you don't necessarily need like the joystick. I don't know if I'm going to use it because I've never had any camera that has had a joystick. I've never used like, a, apart from this 5D Mark IV, I've never had any 5D series camera. So when they took out the joystick on the EOS R, it wasn't really so much of a problem for me, but maybe I'll get used to it, I don't know. <laughs> so the other thing is this camera has dual card slots. With the two card slots, it hasn't really been an issue for me because my 6D had just one card slot, um, my EOS R had just one card slot, and even with the 5D Mark IV, which has two card slots, I'm always using just the SD card because I'm not shooting um, any fast action motion or like the, the 4K in the 5D Mark IV. I wasn't using it because I didn't really like the video that was coming out of the 5D Mark IV. So I was always shooting in 1080, and I hardly even use this for video. I was always using my um, M6 Mark II, but now that I have this, I'm gonna be using this a lot uh, for video work especially. All right, so now I just want to go over the reasons why I got the R6 over the R5. And I have a few points on my phone. I'm just gonna go through and then mention them and then talk about it, just because I don't want to miss any point. The first one, obviously, is going to be the price point. The R6 is coming in at $2,500, and the R5 is coming in at almost $4,000. Um, even though I was able to get the body of the R6, I was able to get um, the adapter, I was able to get the Atomos Ninja V, the, um, the SSD that comes with it, including a, a ton of accessories. All those didn't cost me as much. The R6 has IBIS, the EOS R doesn't have, and the 5D Mark IV also obviously doesn't have the IBIS. So when I'm shooting handheld, it will be easier for me to get stable footage because of the IBIS. The next one is the fact that I can shoot 10 bit 422 internal in this camera, and the EOS R doesn't allow you to do that. You can do 10 bit 422, but you need an external recorder for that. And even with that, there's still a limitation, which is in the 4K, because the 4K is cropped. 
The 4K in this camera, the R6, is also cropped, but you can do without that crop. It's a tiny crop, you can almost ignore it. But then with the R, it has like a 1.6x crop. And so when you have any lens attached to it, you need to consider what lens you're putting on that camera. With this, you don't really need to worry so much about it. And then the next point is going to be the 8K. 8K is what Canon was marketing in the EOS R5. And for me, it's an overkill. Um, I'm always framing my shots the way I want it to be. 8K helps if you want to recompose, but 4K also does, especially if you're going to be um, outputting the videos in 1080p, you can still reframe with 4K. You get a lot of quality out of it. And this is down sampling constantly from 5.5K. And so that is going to be like a better resolution if you're shooting in 4K. One other reason is going to be the megapixel count. The 45 megapixel count on the R5 is a nice to have. If you have it, <laughs> that's awesome and i was also scared to change from the r to the r6 because the r has 30 but 30 and 20 the difference isn't so much i downloaded some files that people have posted concerning uh, the images that go from the r6 and i compared it to the images i got from my r and you can't really tell so much and especially with the way i shoot i'm always shooting the way i want my end uh, result to be so i hardly hardly crop but if you're like shooting landscape and you want to have like heavy crops in your shots then you if you have 45 megapixels that is also going to be a decent uh, megapixel count to have but then i'm going to save on file sizes i'm going to save on external hard drives because the file sizes from this camera are going to be a lot more manageable now one other thing is i was actually scared of the overheating when the r5 came out people were complaining about the overheating i know it has been solved a little bit with the firmware updates and i have a feeling there's going to be like more firmware updates to help with the recovery times of the r5 but i didn't want like to have or to own a camera that has had that problem on the onset even though they've, they've solved it with um, firmware this camera they really have a lot of overheating issues and i'm also not going to be using the internal uh, recording codex a lot because i have the ninja v anytime i'm shooting for clients i'm going to be attaching that so i can bypass the ipv long up compression that this camera has so one thing that was deterring me from getting this camera is going to be the ipv compression which i mentioned because that quality is compressed internally and you don't really have a lot of information coming out of that but with the Ninja V, I'm going to be shooting in ProRes and even DNX, and those promise to bypass the IPB codec of the R6. So I'm going to be getting a lot of information when I'm shooting using the Ninja V. So the last reason why I got the R6 is the fact that I have a feeling there's an EOS R Mark II coming out. And if that one comes out and it solves a lot of the issues that the EOS R has and also keeps the megapixel count, then maybe I'll be compelled to switch back to the EOS R Mark II, especially if um, it promises or if the offerings are a lot better than the EOS R6. If you have an EOS R6, let me know in the comments down below. And if it's working well for you or if you're enjoying uh, the files from the EOS R6, let me know. I'll see you guys in the next video. Remember, don't ever give up.